In this film we're hoping to help householders to, to understand what they can do to their buildings to really make them more comfortable, to save on their fuel bills and also to help with uh, their carbon dioxide emissions to the environment and therefore help with climate change. The key in the Colne Valley is that we have a tremendous number of buildings that are hard to treat and those are hard to improve. We are specialists in very low energy building. Uh, and our particular specialism is in passive house standard building. Now passive house is a, a building methodology that's spreading throughout the world. It originated in Germany and it really gives people the best opportunity to build uh, low energy buildings that really work well. And we built one of the first in the UK so we really do know what we're doing. You can apply the passive house methodology even if you don't achieve the standard uh, to refurbish into buildings and that's really what we've done. We, we've looked at some of the hard to treat buildings in the Colne Valley and we've used the passive house methodology to assess what we can do to those buildings and to assess the energy use when we've done it. The key principle in improving the energy efficiency of our buildings is to think about the fabric first. Now the fabric of the building means the walls and the roof and the floors. So we need to ensure that we've improved those as much as possible. And once we've improved those, the building will carry on working efficiently for the rest of its life. So we insulate the walls, we deal with the air tightness, we deal with the thermal bridging, and then we've got a robust solution to energy efficiency. We can then think about possibly adding on some renewables as well, but if we do it the other way around, we've got a leaky coal building that we're putting this advanced technology onto, and really it's not the right way around. We need to think about the fabric first, it's a key principle. I bought this property specially um, two and a half years ago because um, as I'm getting older I wanted to live somewhere that was going to be um, very energy efficient so that I wouldn't have to pay massive bills as I, as I become a pensioner. So I've downsized, I used to have a bigger house and I've bought this very small terraced house um, with a view to insulating it fully so that it would become a really lovely warm, cosy and hopefully cheap house to run. To make a building energy efficient, there are four key principles really, and everybody's aware that we need insulation, it, it's, it kind of feels obvious, but insulation won't work unless we uh, adhere to all of, all of the principles. So as well as insulation, it's also important that we make the building very airtight, because uh, air movement through insulation and through the building means it reduces the effectiveness of the insulation. We need to ensure that the insulation is continuous, that there aren't gaps in the insulation uh, due to the building structure. For instance, things going through the walls that go through the insulation or where one part of the building meets another, where a wall meets a floor, for instance. So that's very important. And finally, when we've done all of that, we need to think about the ventilation because normally our leaky old houses have, do, do have good ventilation, they've got the wind is blowing through the building. Once we start sealing them up, we have to think about a ventilation strategy so we still have good air quality and we clear the humidity out of the building. If we don't consider all four together, then we're likely to have unintended consequences. It is really important that we do these things at the right time in the building's life. Um, if you take your kitchen out, then it's clearly a good time then to insulate the walls behind and to make the floor airtight before you put a new kitchen back in. If you take the kitchen out especially to do that, it's much, much more expensive. And that's the same anywhere through the building. So you can do these things in stages as you improve your home anyway, and then the cost is much less than if you, than if you do it specially. We started off not specifically to make it very energy efficient, it was a fairly big job and we pretty much stripped it back uh, to, the, um, you know, to the bare timbers. To insulate underneath the ground floor and, the, uh, and up in the loft we use a mineral fibre wool uh, which is very very inexpensive. Then on the external walls um, we used insulated uh, plasterboard uh, which is then in effect glued you know, to the um, existing walls and that accordingly can uh, reduce your uh, heat loss from those walls by sort of half and it does make a big difference when you, you know, when you actually touch the wall um, the external walls and the internal walls it's a very even temperature in terms of air tightness we used um, the air tightness membranes um, and uh, tapes for example underneath here you've got um, a membrane which goes all the way underneath uh, and then it's taped all the way around the edges um, and then you've got the, the uh, mineral wool on top of that. In my house I've 
tried to take a strategic view of the, the whole house. The ground floor and the first floor were all insulated, all the external walls were insulated, and we had dealt with most of the airtightness issues there. What we're left with is the, the roof and the attic space, and the attic space is still incredibly drafty. We'll then join that up with the other work we've done going down through the house. So eventually we will have worked around the house and gone around the whole envelope, but over a period of time. As we make a building more airtight, obviously we're stopping the drafts and that causes problems in its own right or can do if we're not getting rid of the stale air and also water vapour which we're creating through showers and baths and cooking. Obviously opening windows is the first thing one can think of. Extractor fans in the kitchen, which is what we're normally putting in in a new kitchen nowadays. And then again with the trickle vents over the windows in the dry rooms. The next level of uh, ventilation strategy is MEV, Mechanical Extract Ventilation, where you have a central fan which then has ducting to your wet rooms, kitchen, bathroom, utility room and that can actually work at a very low level, we call it trickle vent. Then of course we've got what's called MVHR, mechanical vent heat recovery. That is the ultimate, if you like. We have to have very airtight buildings to make this economic, but it's a very controlled strategy where you have exactly the right fresh air in every part of your building and the outwardly extract air is taken through a heat exchanger. We've looked at the, the two houses using a tool called Passive House Planning Package, which is a software where we plug in all of the data from the houses and then we can look at the effect of different measures on, on the building. So we've started with the house unimproved and to work out the uh, likely energy use of the building. And then we've gone on to add different measures. So we've added insulation, we've looked at the, the other details, so the, the uh, thermal bridging and the ventilation strategies and the air tightness. And we've done different levels of that to see what the effects are. Today we've been um, testing a, an existing house to see if it has any unintentional leakage. So if you think, a house is not a balloon, so any cold air that's coming in is pushing out the hot air that you paid for. So what we're trying to do is, is identify the places where the cold air is coming in and pushing out that hot air. And if we can eliminate some of those holes, then they'll save energy. For the Victorian Terrace, it's a very typical property in the Colne Valley probably built in the 1890s um, and mid-terrace. This is a typical construction, which is stone um, outer walls and a brick inner wall. These houses are very drafty, particularly uh, where you've got suspended timber ground floors. Option A, the, the low cost option, would be topping up your loft insulation to something like 300, which is recommended now. Simple draft proofing measures, looking at how your windows and doors close, putting in proprietary tapes in those situations, maybe even looking at how, your, how drafty it is underneath your skirting, putting a bit of um, filler or silicon in those situations. For option B, which is good practice, we're looking at cladding the inside of the external walls with a, a, a wall boarding, polyurethane in this case. We're looking at bringing that polyurethane into the window reveals. Uh, we're looking at taking some floorboards back um, at the edge of the external walls um, and um, rendering the, the bare brickwork there just to cut down on the drafts and taking our insulation down in that area. We have to have a ventilation strategy because we've improved the air tightness. Now whether that's simply um, good extract fans from the bathroom and the kitchen and trickle vents over windows or whether we need something a bit more complicated. Option C, the most efficient option. We're looking at the same strategies with insulation, replacing the windows um, and installing triple glaze. In getting the air tightness, 
right down. We're going to be using tapes and membranes around floor joists, tapes around windows into the wall. And in doing that, we're able to use the MVHR system, mechanical vent heat recovery. The semi-detached house we're looking at was built in the 1940s um, by the local authority and it's very typical of the mid 20th century housing in the Colm Valley. These are brick cavity and they have solid floors and basically it has a lot bigger external area so typically we're losing a lot through the walls, far more than the Victorian Terrace, even though it's a much later house. Option A is topping up the roof void um, to 300 millimetres, usually a fibreglass. We've got to pay particular attention to the loft hatch, which is usually very drafty. We've got to think about uh, the walls, and in this case, with cavity wall insulation. We've got opportunities of improving the performance dramatically. And of course, we'll look at the drafts around windows and doors, and if we can, underneath skirtings and so forth on the first floor. For option B, we're looking at internally cladding the external walls as well as um, cavity wall insulation. So this will be polyurethane back plasterboards taken into the reveals of the windows, making sure the junction between roof and wall is dealt with by putting an angled piece of insulation um, so that we get continuity of insulation from our wall into our um, loft space. With option C, we're taking the passive house methodology and trying to get to the levels called Enerfit. This is about 10% heating demand of the existing house. The way we do this is that we're going to wrap it externally. This means that we can get over all the cold bridges of junctions with wall, uh, floors meeting walls and roofs meeting walls and so forth. Um, and this is done by putting um, on 250 millimeters of polystyrene externally. And that would then have either renders or even brick slips put on light tiles to mimic what's there already. Um, it would probably mean stripping the roof so that we could get at all the junctions for air tightness measures and upping the insulation to 450 millimeters. It would be dealing with the solid ground floor by putting on vacuum panels which you can get a very good U values or thermal values by quite a small um, depth. We've got to change all the glazing to triple glazing. We can use a very efficient heat recovery ventilation system. I lived in Dalton uh, 13 years. I had centrally in gas fires in all rooms. I climatised to it but everybody used to complain how cold it was and I didn't realise how cold the house was until I moved here. I used to pay direct debit monthly at my other house, and which was £90 a month, and me get me electric was £50 a month. When I got my first bill here, for my three month bill was £84 something pence for my gas bill, and £24 for three months for me electric. I wouldn't swap it for the world. Wouldn't absolutely love it. <laughs>We can do quite a lot in terms of energy efficiency just by dealing with the heating system. We've got quite a high spec boiler, um, so we uh, you know, did choose to spend a little bit of extra money there. Um, but the, the main thing is uh, the weather compensator, um, which we've, which uh, basically um, it uh, senses the external temperature. Uh, if it's very very cold outside then it knows uh, to tell the heating system to put more effort into heating the house up yes, and so your radiators come on hotter, uh, kind of hotter quicker. Uh, if it's quite warm outside then it knows that it's not going to have to put in um, as much effort. In 
terms of the um, electricity side of things, we've got LED bulbs, um, so they're using uh, between sort of, sort of like two and a half watts um, you know, to four watts per bulb. Um, so we've uh, used those in all of the uh, down lighters, and then we've got um, energy efficient bulbs um, elsewhere. We started off not specifically to make it very energy efficient. We um, kind of bought the house and your initial objective is to uh, kind of move in as quickly as possible yeah, um, you know, while spending uh, you know, the least amount of money possible. Once we started taking down walls, that we got to the point where we thought, well, actually, you know, we need to think um, kind of more carefully about um, well, we've insulating. We've got it all out and done where we made exactly. the mess. The, the energy um, efficient measures didn't actually cost that much money. Yeah. Um, it was the it was the fear of the cost, you know, I suppose that that it would have prevented us doing it. Yeah, you can, we got um, what was it all together for all that wolf at loft? And not much. Um, and yeah, we'd have been much, putting yeah. plasterboard up anyway, so we would have had to put the walls back up anyway. The cost of upgrading your house and refurbishing it can be quite daunting. Um, but there are now some resources available that can begin to help you. Um, the, the government's Green Deal is being introduced later this year, um, and that's a funding mechanism to fund some of the improvements you may be wanting to make. Um, another resource is the, if you want to think about uh, an extended mortgage, the Ecology Building Society is offering its sea change mortgage, and, and that's actually offering a, a reduced mortgage if you reach certain levels of energy efficiency. So certainly worth considering. There are lots of resources available. There are resources uh, on the brochure that go with this film, and there are quite a lot of resources on our website as well at www.greenbuildingstore.co.uk. And if you want to know more, you can go to the Warmer Homes website, which is www.warmerhomes.org.uk.